Hello and welcome to another video. This is going to be a tutorial in colored pencil and I'm going to be drawing some still life. I haven't done that in a while and I certainly haven't done that in colored pencil on sandpaper, which is what I'm going to be using now. I'm starting with a simple sketch and I've just sketched the position of the ball. It's going to be a wooden ball with some strawberries. Now I have to admit that my composition wasn't perfect because maybe the whole thing should have been moved a little bit more to the right but it's it's not bad I'm gonna to try to balance it out with my signature uh, once I finish it now the first thing I'm doing I'm going around the top edge uh, with a black colored pencil trying to see where my object will end and where the background will begin and I'm starting to work on that dark background. The, ba the background is mostly going to be black and it's kind of going to be getting lighter and lighter towards the, towards the foreground, towards the bottom edge of the paper. And the bowl with fresh strawberries is on the table, so we're going to have some nice uh, wooden texture of the table with the top part of the table kind of fading into that dark area. And there's going to be some interesting shadows as well. So while I'm doing this I should probably say a few words about the materials even though if you've been watching my videos you probably already know uh, what they are. So these are colored pencils on sandpaper. The sandpaper I'm using is a 1000 grit waterproof sandpaper. It's just uh, regular stuff that you can find in any hardware store. It works really well, well with both pastels and colored pencils. Here I'm kind of experimenting with some blending tools to see uh, what I can use to blend that background and to, to push that material uh, and create a smooth transition towards this lighter area uh, in the foreground. <clears throat> and as for the pencils, for the most part I'm going to be using Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils as I always do, but in addition to the Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils, I also use Kohinoor silky black pencils, which is which are Kohinoor black pencils. I use them because I feel that they are a little bit darker than than the uh, Faber-Castell black colored pencils. So now let's talk a little bit about the light source and things like that. So uh, the it's always important to understand how an object interacts uh, with the light source because that that will help us explain its shape, its uh, give it volume and depth and things like that. So here, by the way, I started using some brown colors here at the at the bottom of the paper. I used some burnt sienna and some other uh, lighter colors on top of that. I'm going to be using mostly a combination of some ochre tones and some brown tones to get a nice looking color of that wooden table and then I'm going to work on the texture a little bit. So uh, back to talking about the uh, light source. The light source is coming from the right in this case. So there's going to be a bit more shadow on the left which is what I'm drawing now. As you can see the ball is casting a bit of shadow to the left and the right side of the ball is going to be a bit lighter than the left one. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with all of the individual objects which are a part of this larger object which means I'm going to have to pay attention to the direction of the light, of the light and the shadows uh, in each and every case, in each and every, uh, with each and every one of those strawberries. <clears throat> now I wanted this to be a wooden ball because it'll give me an opportunity to create some interesting looking textures and I wanted uh, I wanted to use similar colors on both the bowl and the table but slightly different and I just think that this color goes well with the uh, black and also with the reddish and green colors of the strawberries. So we're going to have some nice contrasts here, not only in terms of the amount of value, but also in terms of the, the colors that we're going to have some complementary colors here, which will create a nice contrast in, in this scene. 
Uh, now, as I probably uh, mentioned in the intro, I've done still life before, but I haven't done, uh, as far as I remember, I haven't done still life in color pencil. And uh, I've mostly done that in charcoal. So now, uh, I thought that this was a very interesting looking subject. And it's also very good for practice in many ways, which we're going to talk about uh, during the drawing process. Now I want to say a few more words about the reference and the way I plan to use it. The reference will be attached and you will have a chance to look at it and you will see immediately that um, it's completely different from what I'm drawing here. Uh, the reason why it's different is because I wanted to make some changes so that so that the strawberries in the bowl would stand out a little bit better. So in my reference photo, the bowl is a plain white bowl, a ceramic uh, bowl probably. And I wanted something made out of wood, something with some interesting texture. So that's what I'm going to do here. So that's the first change. The other thing is that we have a plain white background in that reference photo and I want uh, I want a nice contrast uh, I want those uh, red bright red strawberries to stand out against the dark background uh, so I thought that would be a, a very nice looking scene uh, and that's why I made these changes and of course uh, I'm going to add some texture of the wooden table in the in the bottom part of that scene what I'm doing right now I'm trying to make some indications of the shadow areas in between the individual strawberries. Uh, I'm not really sure if this is the best way to do things. I, I just um, I find that to be convenient because it helps me navigate through the drawing a bit more easily once I know where those darkest shadow areas are. And then I start filling in the lighter areas in between. So here I started to experiment with a number of different reds and the reds that I picked for the strawberries in this drawing were um, mostly the cadmium, the light cadmium red I think, that's going to be my main color for the strawberries and I also had some scarlet red and uh, medium cadmium red. So some very nice and interesting colors and in addition to that I'm going to be using all kinds of other colors for example some ivory for some of the lighter details and some uh, lighter uh, what is that uh, lemon yellow for some of the yellowish tones and a couple of different greens for the shadows I'm going to be using of course the black colored pencil but in addition to that I'm going to be using some greens and even some bluish tones uh, now, uh, the background color of my sandpaper, as you can see, is kind of like a dull bluish-gray color, which is fairly dark, I suppose. But I thought that it would work well with this scene. Um, you can use a bit of that background color to, uh, to create some shadow areas where you maybe don't have to fill in every single bit of that tooth. Uh, but uh, for some of the lighter colors, like for example those bright reds, um, the background color isn't that, that great, so I have to fill in uh, the tooth a little bit more thoroughly. Now as for the shape of the, of the strawberries, the thing is that um, it will always have to uh, work from larger details or from larger relationships to smaller details and I, I zoomed in a little bit so that I could show you some of those details so uh, uh, what we have here and you can see that in, re in the reference and I wanted it to look like that I, I, I wanted it to look like uh, fresh uh, freshly picked and washed strawberries in a wall in a bowl which are kind of glistening and uh, they're a little bit shiny so I want to have those shiny highlights and uh, they create a nice contrast and to do those highlights I need to put in lighter 
colors on top of the darker ones and I'm going to be using an ivory colored pencil and a white colored pencil for that. The white colored pencil is obviously completely white and it's cooler. The ivory is a little bit warmer and just a little bit darker than the regular white uh, but they're all very very light colors and they, they are great for these highlights. But the thing is that <clears throat> you also have to pay attention to the texture and the the shape of the or that surface of the strawberry which has some small dents uh, filled with these small seeds which are of yellowish color usually so i'm going to have to try to render those and to render that topography of the of the surface of, of each and every strawberry by using lighter and darker values. Now I'm not really sure how much you can see here but you can see that I'm using whenever I draw one of those small holes or dints I use a bit of darker value in that part of that uh, dint which is facing away from the light source and I use a bit of lighter value where it's uh, facing facing the light source, facing towards the light source. And also it's important to define the edges between individual strawberries so that I can have a clean edge so that the, it, it would be clear, clear to the viewer where one strawberry ends and another one begins. So my camera refocused here a little bit which is good so that you can see some of the detail a bit better <clears throat> and I'm working on these leaves and stems of these strawberries we're going to have some nice uh, combination of green and and red colors which are complementary colors and they go well together and I'm going to be using that green not just uh, to to add these greenish details to the strawberries but also maybe I'm going to be adding a touch of that green to the shadow areas to increase that contrast between the light side and the and the shadow side and to make the shadows look a bit more natural and not just uh, grayish or black all right so here i'm continuing to work on these dark uh, spaces between the the individual strawberries defining the overall shape and putting these shadow areas in between them this is doing two things basically it's allowing me to define the shape of each and every one of the strawberries to define their edges but it's also helping me uh, convey a little bit more depth in my scene so that we can feel like uh, th there are these um, how should I explain these deep uh, shadow areas in between the strawberries where less light is coming through this is a lovely color this uh, light cadmium red and uh, it's uh, even though it's called red, it's, uh, it has some yellowish, orangey tones to it, which is what I wanted. I, I wanted these uh, strawberries to be a bit more like the kind of strawberries that I like to eat, the kind of the, the, the <laughs> here people normal, normally grow in their, in their uh, gardens, in their backyards. Uh, these are kind of like uh, wild strawberries. They're smaller. They uh, they are better when you pick them when th when they're not too ripe. So they can be a little bit greenish and yellowish, uh, and <clears throat> they're not quite as sweet or as large, but or as fleshy. But uh, they taste really nice. Um, so I'm adding these lighter details and some of these lighter details are those seeds in those small holes and some of them are just reflections uh, those light reflections where the part of the surface of the strawberry appears kind of shiny uh, right now they look very simple but once I start adding some uh, details of lighter and darker value all of this will start to look a little more three-dimensional so you can see I'm adding these shadow areas to to give a little more depth 
to this flat surface and then I'm using some even lighter um, colored pencil strokes to to add, add these highlights to increase that contrast and naturally to make everything look more three-dimensional. One of the things that I forgot to mention uh, when I started talking about adding these lighter details on top of the darker ones was that <clears throat> of course it is something that you can only do on this surface. Of course if you're using artist quality sanded papers such as UART and some others you will of course be able to do this but on regular papers I don't think you would be able to do this because colored pencils behave completely differently on sanded papers than they do on regular papers. On sanded papers it's easier to cover large areas, it's easier to blend and it's easier to put lighter details on top of the darker ones which is almost impossible on regular paper. This paper has a little more texture, it has a little more tooth and it allows you to put some very small fine clean details with clean edges on top of the areas of uh, darker value. So this is one of the advantages of this type of paper and this is one of the reasons why the vast majority of my colored pen of my recent colored pencil drawings were in fact done on uh, on this sandpaper. And the reason why I prefer <clears throat> 1000 grit sandpaper rather than uh, 600 or 800 where I would get a little more tooth maybe is because this is a little, little bit finer it wears down the pencils a bit less and it uh, allows for some smoother coloring and blending uh, smaller grits uh, are probably better suitable for pastels and pastel pencils but even when I work in pastels, I tend to prefer a 1000 grit sandpaper. Um, if you're wondering whether I could do this in pastels, of course, but I think colored pencils are much, much better when it comes to these smaller details and finer textures. You can see that I'm adding these a lighter parts of the of the strawberries near the near those leaves and uh, and and that part where the where the stem was so i want them to look like they're not too ripe like they have still have some of those greenish greenish parts because i i like most of my fruit a little bit greenish not too ripe and that goes for strawberries as well so we're going to have some more lighter details here using a white colored pencil for these i'm really hoping that these will stand out nicely now i'm not saying that the uh, layer of color underneath is not influencing the lighter details at all it is a little bit but it mostly depends on how much color you put down, how much pressure you used, how much of that tooth you've banished. But you can usually put in some lighter details on top of the darker ones and they usually look pretty good. And you're usually able to achieve a very nice amount of contrast. You can see how these are really starting to stand out. And uh, I'm also starting to get a little bit better at this because um, every time you're drawing something that you haven't drawn before I suppose um, it takes a little bit of adaptation and for me every single drawing as I've already mentioned many times every single drawing is a learning process for me there, there are always some new things and there are always some surprises so that's just the way it is right now I'm trying to work on the shadow areas of this strawberry so I want to add some darker details to these small small dots small dints as well as shade the overall shape of the strawberry by making the the, the lower part of it a little bit darker because the top part
part is facing facing up facing the light source and the lower part is kind of in the shadow and it's also casting a bit of shadow onto the strawberries under uh, underneath so now I'm moving on to the next strawberry and that's pretty much going to be the drawing process I move from one strawberry onto another until I finish with the strawberries and then I'm going to work on the bowl and at this point I still had no idea what I was going to do with the texture of the bowl I just knew that I wanted it to be made out of wood that's why I used a bit of ochre for its base color and I, uh, I didn't really I didn't really decide uh, what it will look like. I often work from a couple of different references. I just, uh, whenever you're trying to either create something unique or create something that is more to your liking, you will often have to deviate from your references or use multiple references. So I strongly advise you to do that. And another advantage of that is that you can maybe avoid some uh, copyright issues if you if you like a, a reference photo that you don't have a permission to use well just use it as an inspiration and do something slightly different uh, but you maybe use some details from it uh, that you like and uh, that's usually how I approach things but this uh, reference photo I think was taken from the Pexels or uh, Pixabay, one of those free image, free image sites. So it doesn't really matter. It's just for practice anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just uh, refining the shape of these leaves here, these small green leaves, adding some shadows in between them, adding some lighter details around the edges so that they would really stand out and so that they would feel three-dimensional. This is, I suppose, a medium length video. I have shorter ones and some longer ones on my main channel. On Patreon you can see mostly uh, very long full-length narrated videos, but I think videos like this one can also be useful because um, These still life drawings um, They're a great opportunity for practice and for understanding some of the fundamentals but also for practicing and exploring some possibilities of your materials and your tools such as these pencils for example and especially in a combination with this surface. I'm adding a bit of green to these shadow areas to, to increase that contrast not just in terms of value but also in terms of uh, hue. I prefer to do the sh shadows, especially darker shadows with a black colored pencil. I have no problem using a black colored pencil, but I, I sometimes use some other tones on top of that and using a green here against the red is a good idea because they are complementary colors. So here I'm defining some of these small dots and adding a bit more shadow to some of them. I want a little bit more of this darker shadow in between these strawberries so that I can increase the depth so that the whole thing will look a bit more three-dimensional. I forgot to say what the size of the drawing is. I think the size is about... I'm not really sure. Probably... probably around 5 times 10 inches or so or maybe it's even less it doesn't really matter anyway back to drawing those highlights using a lighter colored pencil you can see how they almost uh, form patterns here on the surface of the strawberry. 
but you don't want to uh, create full shapes with closed uh, closed edges you want to just uh, draw some hints or suggestions of these lighter areas that's way th that way they're a lot more effective with just a few lighter details so the reason why I, the, the strawberries appear so shiny like i said is i want them to look like uh, fresh strawberries that just that, that have just been washed and put in a bowl to serve uh, for people to eat and that way they're kind of shiny and uh, there's a bit more contrast if if that wasn't the case i guess these uh, these lighter areas would be a lot more subdued and maybe the drawing would be a bit less interesting because there would be there there would be less contrast going around the edges of these leaves adding some shadow areas before i start working with the greens and improvising a bit uh, with the shapes of some of these strawberries because I don't need to be uh, super precise or super accurate, accurate I'm not drawing a portrait of a person so I can just uh, make some modifications to the shape of the strawberries and not worry too much about the proportions and the exact shape in these shadow areas here and there I put in some lighter details like for example some suggestions of some strawberries which can be seen through the shadows or maybe some some of the greenish leaves just sticking out just ever so slightly but it's mostly just darker areas in between them uh, so that they look kind of stacked on top of one another i'm grazing over some parts of these uh, uh, red red areas with a green colored pencil to introduce a bit more contrast I want these greenish areas not just to enhance the shadows but also maybe to make the drawings look less ripe I suppose you can see that the quality of my footage kind of varied a little bit depending on uh, the lighting and the way the camera was adjusted uh, now it looks pretty good sometimes it's just a little bit blurry there's there's not really that much i can do about that but i think that for the most part uh, the quality was okay and you can for the most part you can see what i'm doing pretty clearly uh, so i'm working on this strawberry here at the bottom adding more of these lighter areas i wanted to add some shadows being cast from these leaves from right to left but um, the colors ended up muddying a little bit too much so i didn't really like that color so i had to make some adjustments but obviously uh, not all of these strawberries have to look perfect some of them will attract a little more focus than others like for example these two in the very middle and the one at the top those are the ones that you will notice immediately and uh, that's why they have to look great but others which are partly in the shadow they don't have to look either that detailed or that clean or that smooth um, just working on these leaves and uh, the, this lighter part where the where the strawberry was plucked and of course adding a bit more shadow in between these individual strawberries um, here on the left side one of the things that I didn't like was that when I started blending this transition between the shadow and the uh, and the lighter brownish area of the table uh, once it started blending i revealed a little bit too much of that background color which is bluish so um, the uh, that shadow area appeared too cool for no reason and i had to add some warmer colors to make the shadow look a bit more natural and to make the whole transition look a bit more natural But I want the top part of the drawing to be fairly dark with virtually no 
texture. <clears throat> I'm kind of uh, getting closer to wrapping things up with these strawberries on the right side because I only have three more of them to draw three or at least three which will be visible. So once I finish that I'll be able to focus on the on the bowl and the rest of the or rest of the scene, the background. Some more shadows here between the strawberries and the bowl. And of course uh, uh, once again that light cadmium red for my base color of the strawberries. I hope you like my choice. I really like that color. And I'm using it to shade or rather color in these reddish parts of the strawberries and later adding some other darker tones on top and of course some details and textures as well. You can see that I've done most of the work on these darker shadow areas with a silky black pencil. It's a Quachinor black pencil which like I said is a bit darker than the Faber-Castell one but not that much honestly. Uh, its main advantage is the fact that when I put it on top of other colors, when I layer uh, colors, it looks a bit darker than the Faber-Castell black color pencil. When I put the Faber-Castell black color pencil on, on top of some lighter colors, the, the, uh, the colors that I'm getting end up being a little bit lighter than I want them to. They, they, sometimes they, I can't get them to be dark enough. <laughs> With these silky black pencils, I usually don't have a don't have that problem. Maybe they're made of a slightly different material. They feel like colored pencils, but I'm pretty sure they have some carbon or charcoal in them, so that's why they're a little bit darker. I'm drawing some more of these green leaves here. So with the leaves, I sometimes I started with the darker colors and then put lighter colors on top. Sometimes I did the opposite. It really depended on the situation. Sometimes I just uh, found it easier to do one thing, sometimes the other. It depends on which colors dominate and uh, how I need to draw the shadows and the lighter details and things like that. Filling in one more strawberry with some red and then working on the shadows and the shape around it. Doing a bit of blending and then working on some details. So one by one they're all going to be finished. And the reason why, another reason why this drawing is so relevant right now is because uh, soon there will be strawberries. And well, it depends on where you live and, um, and some other factors, but at least where I live they will be available in April, uh, early May, etc. So once again, those lighter areas using an ivory color pencil, defining the edges between individual strawberries, adding some lighter and yellowish details around this uh, stem area, the root area, and adding some greenish touches in the shadow area and elsewhere. Now it's time to work a bit more on the background and maybe clean up to the edge of that bowl and maybe also refine its shape, make it look a bit more round because right now uh, there are some irregularities and I don't really think it looks great. So once I start working on, uh, on the background, I'm going to be able to refine the, the shape of the bowl. And of course, I'm going to be adding quite a bit of texture to it. But uh, not just yet. I'm going to do that a bit later. First, I have to do at least a bit more of this background. I want to make this transition between this uh, lighter area in the foreground and the darker area in the background. And of course there's going to be less shadow here on the right side because that's our light side and the, the bowl is casting a shadow to the left. So this side is going to have to be a bit lighter. 
Brushes allow for very smooth blending, but if you use them a lot, they tend to pick out the pigment and reveal a little bit too much of the background color. You need to be careful with that. Fingers can also work, not as well as they work with pastels and pastel pencils, but they can definitely work, especially if the, uh, the amount of value and the hue of the background color of your sandpaper is not too different from the color you're trying to achieve. I'm putting some finishing details on these leaves, trying to work out their shape as well as uh, add some lighter and darker details to them to increase the range of value and make them appear more three-dimensional. And also putting down some finishing touches on the strawberries as well. There's just this one here at the bottom to finish. And uh, after that, maybe just a few finishing touches and then I can totally focus on the wooden bowl and uh, finish the rest of the scene, finish the rest of the background. A bit more shadow here under this one on the right. Each and every one of them is casting a shadow onto each ob object that it's leaning against or uh, lying on top of, I suppose. But we can still see some lighter details and uh, highlights here and there. I wouldn't say this drawing is horribly complex, even for a beginner. It's just that, um, in terms of defining light, um, lighter and darker areas, it probably shouldn't be too difficult. But in terms of textures, it can probably uh, probably be a bit challenging. Notice how I used an ivory colored pencil, this lighter pencil at the top of the bowl around that edge, because that edge part is facing the light source, the sides are facing away from the light source, especially on the left, which is the shadow area, which is why we have the shadow on the left, because uh, the shadow is being cast by this ball. And here I'm finishing the background and finishing that transition, adding some brownish tones in that dark area and maybe adding some random texture to the table so that it looks a little bit more like actual wood. I need to try to refine the texture a little bit more, add some of these horizontal lines, horizontal shapes. Maybe uh, make some indication of the of the um, shadow areas in between the in between those lines, that grain of the wood. Right now, I'm working with a darker pencil. This is a burnt umber, one of the darker browns I have, but I'm going to be putting some lighter details on top of that as well. I'm uh, adding some lighter details using an ochre colored pencil. That's also going to um, improve the texture of that wood a little bit more. I'm adding a bit more of that here in the foreground and a little bit more of those lighter tones on the right side because that is my light side. I don't want that texture to be too rough, too distracting. I need a little more texture on this wooden bowl. I'm going to use a couple of lighter colors, maybe even a little bit of reflection here on this part of the table. Um, I need to clean up the edge of that bowl. You can see that I already started working on the grain of the wood a little bit. I tried to work on the texture a bit, but I didn't really like it. So I decided to rework it and I decided to put something that looks like a knot in the tree here and then just work around it with these either circular or semi-circular shapes of the grain of the wood. 
These are just the darker ones. I'm going to put some lighter ones in as well. And I'm using a burnt sienna for this. It's a reddish brown. It goes well with this ochre. This is already starting to look a little bit more like wood, but it's going to be even better once I start putting in some lighter details in between those darker ones. And of course, they need to be darker in the shadow area, and the whole shadow area of the bowl needs to be a bit darker. So we need to stay consistent with the with a light source. And this top edge of the bowl, which is facing up, needs to be lighter, so I'm using an ivory colored pencil for that. This is really starting to look like an object made out of wood. And obviously those highlights on the, on the left side are going to be a lot darker. And now I'm adding some more lighter shapes in between the darker ones using an ivory colored pencil. You can see how much more realistic this is starting to look. And of course the whole right edge, the, the edge on the right needs to be way darker than the one on the left. So that we could stay consistent with the light source obviously. And there's going to be a little bit more shadow at the bottom as well because the bottom part is facing down away from the light source but there's always a little bit of reflected light here and there so you can play around with that but right now I'm mostly concerned with the overall shapes and making this making this left side just a little bit darker so that it looks like it's in the shadow uh, I'm, I'm nearly done. I'm almost done with this drawing. I'm putting down some greenish details here and there. I don't want to overdo it. If I use them sparingly, the scene will look a lot more effective with a lot more contrast. But I'm, also, uh, I'm almost done with that. So I've used about 10 different pencils or so for this one, even though it's a somewhat simpler drawing. The drawing, by the way, here is finished. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to put a, put a small signature here in the lower right corner to balance things out a little bit because my whole bowl is moved just a little bit more to the left. But I think it looks fine. I hope you found this video useful or entertaining. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye for now.